I hope you all are doing well at home. Okay, today I am here to take your grammar class, and this is for class eight. Class eight, this is your chapter number five, and the subject is on verbs. We all know what are verbs, right? So we are not going to learn on that. But here in this chapter, we are going to learn some different types of verbs. They are transitive and intransitive verbs, finite and non-finite verbs, and types of non-finite verbs. Okay, so we learn one by one. First, we learn this transitive verb. What are transitive verbs? <coughs> okay, listen carefully. A transitive verb is a verb which requires an object to complete its meaning. Okay, for example, if I say I, I kicked. Okay, this is a verb. I kicked. Does it complete the meaning? It is not completed, right? So you have a question in your mind. You kick what? Or what did you kick? So if I say I kick the ball, now it completes the meaning. Okay, the verb takes an object to complete the meaning. Another example: I found the necklace. I found what? The necklace. Okay, so this verb. The verb kick and form it takes an object to complete its meaning. So this is called and this is called a transitive verb. Okay, intransitive verbs. What are intransitive verbs? Okay. An intransitive verb is a verb which does not require any object to complete its meaning. For example, the dog, the dog jump. Here, the verb jump it completes its meaning, right? The verb itself completes its meaning, so this verb is intransitive verb. Another example, the child is crying. The child is crying. Now, is crying, this verb phrase, it completes its meaning, right? The child is crying, it doesn't take any object to complete its meaning. So, this, this verb phrase, is crying, is an intransitive verb. Okay. Sometimes some intransitive verb which does not take any object to complete its meaning but it does take some other words or group of words to complete its meaning and they are called complement. Let me give you an example. If I say he, he is. Here, is. He is, it doesn't complete the meaning, right? But the verb is doesn't take any object. Alright, but if I say he is a doctor, now it completes the meaning, right? Okay, a doctor is not an object because it refers back to the subject. So this is a subject complement. Okay, so he is, is, is an intransitive verb because it doesn't take any object to complete its meaning. It does take any other, some other words, alright? Okay, now finite verbs. What are finite verbs? Finite verbs are verbs that they change according to the tense, meaning time, time of action, according to the persons, okay? First person or second person or third person, and according to the number of person doing the action, singular or plural, all right? Here are the examples. Now, Rita painted a picture. Rita paints a picture. Rita will paint a picture. Rita is painting a picture. Now, here, here, the verb here is painted, here paints and here will paint is painting. Okay, the verb changes here according to the time of action. Painted, it happened in the past, paints in present, will paint, future, simple future, is painting, present continuous. The verb changes according to the time of action. Okay, here in this example, Rita paints a picture, <coughs> Rita and Rina paint a picture. Here, Rita is third person singular number, so the word the word is paints. Here, Rita third person and Mina also third person, but Rita and Mina together they are plural, right? Third person plural, so the verb is paint. So here the verb changes according to the number of the person doing the action. Okay, this is another example here. I paint a picture, you paint a picture, she paints a picture. Here you see that I, this is first person singular number, but I, though it is a singular subject, it takes plural verb paint. Okay, you, second person, second person is always considered as 
uh, plural number. So it takes plural verb paint. Here C, third person singular number, the verb is paint. So the uh, verb here paint, I paint, you paint, and she paints. Okay, the verb changes according to the person doing the action, first person, second person, third person. So finite verbs are words that change according to the time of action, according to the number of person doing the action and according to the person, first person or second person or third person doing the action. Non-finite verbs, non-finite verbs are verbs, they do not change, whatever be the time of the action, uh, whoever, uh, whatever the subject, whoever the subject, first person or second person or third person, or whatever the numbers, singular or plural, the verb remains the same. Here are the example, I like baking cakes, you like baking cakes, she like baking cakes, they like baking cakes. Here, first person singular number, I, second person, third person singular number, third person plural. Okay, these, these are all different persons, but the verb remains the same. Okay, verb here, simple present, simple present, simple past, simple present. Okay, different verbs, but here, this verb doesn't change. Okay, these are non-finite verbs. It doesn't change. Whatever be the time of the action, a number of the people doing the action, whoever the person doing the action, it remains the same. So they are called non-finite verbs. Okay. Now, types of non-finite verbs, they are infinitive, gerunds, and participle. Okay, first of all, infinitive. <coughs> what are infinitives? Infinitives are verbs, it is a basic form of verb. The root form of verb or verb without verb without s or i e s or e d. Okay, for example, cry, see, love, <coughs> this is a basic form of verb, okay, if we are to use this verb in third person singular number, we get cries, okay, so this is not infinitive, this is infinitive, the root form of verb, okay, <coughs> so, um, Infinitive is generally preceded by preposition to and followed by verb. Okay, sometimes we, we use infinitive without a preposition to, and that we call rare infinitive. Okay? For example, <coughs> I want to study. I want to study. Here, I want. One is one here. This verb is the main verb here. To study, I want to study um, science. Okay. To study, here yeah, to study is non finite verb, okay, <clears throat> because it doesn't indicate any tense, okay, it will not change according to the time of the action or according to the person of person doing the action, according to the number of uh, person doing the action, okay. I want to study science. They want to study science, you want to study science, it will not change, okay? So, infinitive with preposition to, we call full infinitive, okay? Or to infinitive. And sometimes we use infinitive without the preposition to, that we call bare infinitive. For example, if I say he, he made, he made me cry. Okay, here, the verb mate is the main verb and made me cry. This is non-finite verb. It doesn't indicate any tense. Okay? He made me cry here. Infinitive is used without a preposition to. So, we call this is bare infinitive. Okay? So, infinitive with to. Okay? It is called to infinitive or full infinitive. Infinitive without preposition to is called bare infinitive. Okay, now, gerunds. Now, one thing I'll tell you, gerunds and participle is your next chapter, okay? Your next chapter, chapter 6, is about gerunds and participle, but we will learn here gerunds and participle under non finite words, okay? So, gerunds, okay, what are gerunds? Gerunds are ing form of verb and it is used as a noun in a sentence, okay? Example, zogging, if I write, zogging is a good exercise. <clears throat> Here, jogging, this identity for move verb is taking 
in a place of a noun. Okay? If I ask, jogging is a good exercise. What is good exercise? Jogging is a good exercise. Okay? So jogging, this ing form of verb is taking the place of a noun. It is not functioning as a verb here. So <clears throat> another example, uh, if I say fishing, fishing is my hobby. What is my hobby? Fishing is my hobby. Okay, this ing form of verb is used as a noun in this sentence. Okay, so jiran is uh, is an ing form of verb acting as a noun in a sentence. And this ing form of verb it can be used as a verb also. For example, if I say I am I am jogging now. Here, the verb, this ing form of verb is, is used as a verb. I am jogging now. Here it is used as a verb. Okay, here it is used as a noun. So, this ing form of verb can be used as a noun and it can be used also as a verb. Participle. Okay. Participle is actually a big subject. There are so many things to learn on that. But we will learn some of them here in this chapter. Um, as there are three participles, present participle, past participle, and perfect participle. Present participle, present participle is also an ing form of verb, but it functions like an adjective. Okay, remember, jiran is ing form of verb, but it functions like a noun. Okay, present participle is also ing form of verb, but it functions like a like an adjective. For example, <coughs> I say he he got down from a running bus. Here, the verb running, this ing form of verb is not functioning as a verb, it is functioning as an adjective here. It is describing the noun bus. Okay, what bus? Running bus. Okay, similarly, so I want to play with dancing dolls. What dolls? Dancing dolls. Okay, so present participle is ing form of verb and it acts like, a, like an adjective in a sentence. And present participle can be also used as a verb in a sentence. Okay, for example, I am running now. Here, running, okay, this ing form of verb is used as a verb, okay. So, present participle can be used as an adjective and it can be used as a verb in a sentence. Now, we go to uh, past participle. Past participle is formed with the third form of the verb and functions like an adjective. For example, if I say I ate a boiled egg, okay, I ate a boiled egg. Here the word, the verb boil, it describes the noun egg. Okay. <coughs> what what egg I ate? Boiled egg. Okay. She removed another example. She removed the broken chair. Here the the verb broken it is functioning as an adjective. It describes the noun chair. Okay, this is past participle. Past participle is using a third, third form of verb, functions like an adjective in a sentence. And it can be used as a verb also. For example, if I say I have I have broken. I have broken my glasses. Spectacles. So here, broken is used as a verb. Okay. So past participle it ends with id or t or en. Okay. It is used as an adjective in the sentence and it can be used as a verb also. Okay. Perfect participle. Perfect participle indicates completed action. Suppose, okay, you played you played football and you went home. So we use we form perfect participle by using having. Having plus verb 3. 
Okay, you played football, then you went home. Then you can write, you can say, having played, having played football, Uh, having played football, he went home. So this is the use of perfect participle. We use perfect participle to shorten the sentences. Okay. Okay. Now let us learn using participles to join sentences. Okay. It is that in your book, Sunita was in Delhi for five years. She worked as a teacher. There are two sentences. Now we are going to join these two sentences by using participle. So what we are going to do is, the more important sentence is taken as a main clause and the verb in the other sentence is changed into a participle. So Sunita was in Delhi for five years. We take that sentence as a main clause. Okay, Sunita was in Delhi for five years working as a teacher. Okay, if two things happen simultaneously, we use ing for one of the verbs. Okay, when two things happen at the same time, for example, she felt thrilled, she began to jump. So when two things happen at the same time, one of the action we put in present simple, uh, present participle, that is, feeling thrilled, she began to jump. Okay. And when one action is done before another action, we use having for the first action. For example, they played football, they went home. Okay, they played football, they went home. First action is playing football. So we put that in past uh, perfect participle. Having played football, they went home. Okay, now let us learn some exercises from your book. We have learned what is a transitive verb and intransitive verb. Here in this exercise, you are asked to find out whether the given verb is a transitive verb or intransitive verb. Okay, so in order to find the, whether a given verb is a transitive verb or intransitive verb, first of all, you have to find out, you have to check out whether an object is available in the sentence or not. Okay? So, in order to find an object, you need to ask two questions. That two questions were that is, whom or what? Yeah? Whom is, we use whom for person, what we use for objects. Okay, so remember, object comes always after the verb. So, you need to ask, who or what to the verb, okay? I borrowed what, okay? The answer is the book, okay? This is direct object. This is from Tina, this is indirect object. The verb borrowed is taking two objects here. <coughs> so you find the answer after asking what to the verb, right? That means object is available in the sentence. So this verb is transitive verb, okay? So another example here, we were in the hostel together. <coughs> We were in the hostel together. In this group of word, you cannot ask what or whom. Okay, you will not find the answer. Okay, we can only ask we were where. Okay, where were we? We were in the hostel. Okay, so this verb is not answering of what or whom. Okay, so the verb where is not taking any object to complete its meaning. It is taking some other words, a group of words. So this verb is called intransitive verb. Okay, uh, that's all for today. Stay home, stay safe, do it for yourselves, do it for your family, do it for India. Let's break the chain of COVID-19. Come home, come here, come here, Jai Hind.